Hi viewers, welcome back to our talk on the Women's Corner. So this is actually the last session for the year. We give God the glory. It has been an awesome year. And um, in light of mental wellness, which was last month, we thought we should look at a topic that will center around mental wellness. And we titled the theme for this discussion, um, Managing Emotions. And so this are the women we have for this session, the last session for the year. Thank you so much, sisters, for showing up. We appreciate each and every one of you. We pray that the Holy Spirit will speak through you and the viewers and lives will be blessed with the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So I welcome Amen. you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so managing emotions. We're excited. I'm sure you viewers watching are excited. We want to look at how we manage emotions in our life experiences, with regards to our marriages, with regards to parenting, with regards to our businesses, at places of work, in ministry as well. Like every dimension of our life needs us to manage emotions. And we all know that emotions is something that we don't take for granted. When it gets out of hand, um, without the leading of the Spirit of God and without subjecting to the Spirit of God, it turns out into something else. So I'm excited. I am. Um, Waiting to learn from you all, I'm sure viewers are also excited. Please feel free to drop your questions, commendations, contributions are also welcome. Stay tuned as we go into the discussion. But just before we do that, we'd like to take a few minutes to commit this program into God's hand. Mommy, can you please kindly you help us with an opening prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord we appreciate you. Hallelujah. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We well, thank you, O oh Lord my God, for an opportunity to be here once again this morning. Lord, we commit this topic into your hands. Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, our God, speak through us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your word sees the entrance of your word gain light and understand it to be simple. Father, we pray, O oh Lord our God, that Lord, even as we begin to describe different aspects of emotion, let it lighten every darkness in the life of our viewers in the name of jesus amen. Amen. let every of these things we are going to see lord meet them at the point of their needs in jesus name amen. let it give unto their life a quick and positive turn around in the name of jesus amen. once again that will bless your holy name jesus. in jesus mighty name we are praying amen. Amen. amen thank you so much man all right without much ado we're starting from this corner <laughs> <laughs> so we're handing the mic over to Sister Vera in the house. <laughs> 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 of course. Uh, okay. Uh, everybody knows my name. My name is Vera. So today we're looking at um, managing emotions with um, family members and um, friends. Uh, before I go into that, I will ask some. Um, what is an emotion as in for us to understand what emotions mean mm. um okay i can define it simply like it as a feeling a feeling one's feeling at a particular time due to action reaction experience um you know due to environmental factors that are there too uh, that can cause one to feel one way or the other but uh, there is positive and there is negative emotion mm. uh, depending on which one the person is asserting at a particular time will determine um, how the person feels um, but the thing is um, and like I always say you cannot help others contain how they feel mm. you can just you know understand try to understand how other people feel especially our family members with outside people you can use avoidance mental just avoid the person but when is a family member is somebody you can you cannot choose your family members but you mm. you can choose who to relate with outside there uh, your family members are always with you you know so Trying to manage their emotions, first of all, you have to, first of all, understand the person. 
put yourself in the person's shoes at that particular time and what the person is feeling at that particular time especially um when it comes to anger sadness when it comes to if it's something that is joyful and happy you go with the flow you are happy with the person you are joyful with the person but when it comes to anger sadness and all that um try to be calm firstly identify the person's emotion if somebody walks in and you see the person and um, he or she is not responding the way he normally does try to put yourself in the person's shoes be calm mm -hmm. use them um, and the bible says that a soft and, uh, answer drives away mm -hmm. us so if you want to intervene try as much as possible to instead of maybe you reacting in a negative form try to react in a positive form i'll give an example maybe for example somebody is angry and then um, you want to find out what is wrong and instead of asking the person as in what is wrong with you now you can come from another um, uh, question point of view as in i can see you are angry mm. what's the matter mm. there are two different things what is wrong with you now what is wrong with the person you can see the person is angry but you are adding fuel to the already burning fire but when you say, I can see you are angry what's the matter what's the cause if the person is you know able to open up just listen listen to what the person has to say and just be attentive then as he or she is talking then you are able to pick where the source of that feeling where it is coming from and when he or she is done then try as much as possible to suggest not to impose but suggest to the person what you feel within yourself might be a solution and if the person is not forthcoming let the person be at least for that time because it might take some time for that person to come out from their emotion and if it's something that is being caused by an environment where the person is just try to like maybe take a walk take the person out of that environment so that the person can calm down another thing that works is um breathing in help the person to maybe take just breathing deep breath mm -hmm. yeah take a deep breath for some second then breathe out through the mouth do it for some time you see that some of these emotions will just disappear you you see it it will leave you know and the person will calm down but where the problem is is if the person is a constant angered person then there's a problem if it's somebody that any time and every time you see the person there's always a negative vibe around then the person needs more than you helping maybe the person will have to need a therapeutic help and you know Telling somebody to go for therapy. Especially <laughs> <laughs> in the African so context. You know, yes. 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 Can, should be able to manage your own emotions to be able to help another person so that the environment will not be filled with negative vibes mm -hmm. so with families and friends it's always calm sometimes people will say um, avoidance you know just don't talk about it swallow it do this if you swallow it and continue to swallow it it mm. can lead to depression and other mm -hmm. things mm. other meta issues Sickness, yeah. so it's better you speak out like uh, like i said you if you speak out don't don't swallow it but the way you speak out again matters a lot like it's also it's good to respond but don't react at that particular time to it just mm. respond and but don't react because your reaction can actually cause harm to another person again.
and does a lot of things. So concerning family and friends, we can help them. We can help them in managing their emotions as we too learn to manage our own emotions. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> well, viewers, I'm sure you enjoyed that um, very brief discussion. And I think she was really point black hitting it on the hitting the nail on the head. Um, I would like for us to you know contribute or ask one or two questions with regards to all that Sister Vera has said. Is there any aspect or area we feel like yeah. Was touchy, Mama Kenny? You have any? Well, she, she she talks about uh, anger. Mm. Well, like what you are saying before that, for someone that is angry, that mm. does, does not even know that he has a problem. It's a problem in his life. Okay. He doesn't even know that it's emotional. It's just like take me to the this is who I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. Mm. So in that kind of an aspect, the, the person is not even ready to see the truth mm. or to see who he is. So how can we deal with such a person? Will you accept that? Oh, this is the way my husband is. This is the way my friend is. <laughs> just, yeah, some people believe that it's my That's cross, true. let me carry it. Mm. It's always emotional. When it's emotional, ah, soldier has come home. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> should like it. Everybody <laughs> run. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. some mm. people like that, that mm. when they know that either their wife or their husband is now getting to that, they wake up in the morning and they know that he has waking up in the right side of the bed. Mm. They will say, let me, you will not even say good morning, because your good morning is going to be a bad morning. Mm. So don't let us talk. Any day that you know that he's happy again, you talk. talk you, know, you cannot live your life like that. Like that. Working on eggshells. You know, my question is, how can you help such a person? Mm. He doesn't see that he has a problem. It's a problem, and the problem is affecting him. Yeah. It's affecting him. Mm. Okay, and um, I will say that the Bible, I will always go back to the Bible yes, because that is my own. <laughs> the Bible will say, uh, it says that the heart of kings is in the hands of the Lord. So I always say, it, there's there's one prayer I always pray when I want to, I say, hey, I took that thing from a Wala Denuga production. We say we are nothing but pencil, pencil in the hand of the creator. Hallelujah. So when I when I always say that when I find something very difficult or something I, I need a lot place, I always go back to God. We are pencils in your hand. You see this matter. You have to handle mm. it, Lord. Because there's nothing I can do. Even if you, you talk from Nazi tomorrow, it's not going to. But when you remind God of his word, believe it or not, he acts. Mm. He acts. Mm. And another thing, Joyce May I will say that um in her book, she, she said, work on yourself and leave the other person to God. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says when your obedience is complete, mm -hmm. God will do something about it. So work on yourself and leave the other person to God. Because when the person is trying to frustrate you, God will come back and you cannot frustrate my daughter. She mm -hmm. has done her own part. Now it is for God to show him or her how to, you know, match up and you see the person coming around mm -hmm. you will see the person coming around when you start telling somebody to his or her face every time this is your problem this is your problem this is your problem you who is doing that you have also become a problem yeah you've all, well, also putting more fire you are you've always done, so you then you're judging the person you're trying to make are you better than the person mm -hmm. yes he has a problem yes but we are not better than the person. We are all human beings and mm -hmm. we are all you know, work in progress. So God is working on him or her as far as as well as mm -hmm. working on you. So face your own, but pray for the person so that God too can do his work. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I think she has done justice to that question. Yes, it is. Um, yes, for yes. viewers, I'm sure you got that in put in a wrap. It means that when you have a difficult person to deal with. We all know that there are some personalities that are quite difficult to deal with. Um, it takes the grace of God, but you play your part. You know, um, there's a saying that you can't change people. You know, we leave that, we leave that to God. So we do our part. And I've seen so many marriages where it started off as either the man or the woman was the difficult person 
but because of the grace in which the other partner was handling the issue and committing him to God's hands, God just miraculously Change. did what only he can do. So we pray that if there's any viewer watching that, experiencing that in family or whatever the case might be, that the Lord will intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we move on to Mama Kenny. Amen. Mama Kenny, I love your hairstyle. <laughs> you look at your knees. Don't give me. I'm going to be teenagers. Yes. I'm automatically 15. <laughs> Not even 21. I love that. <laughs> I want to be like that when I grow up. <laughs> you look good anyway. So let's hand over the mic to you. Let's know what you have. To yeah, show us. praise the Lord. We are yeah. looking at the managing emotion and the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the biblical definition of emotions? It is the is the is the language of the soul. Mm -hmm. And it is a, the cry that gives the heart a voice. Mm. That is emotions. Mm. And we have different kinds of emotions, just mm. like Savannah started earlier. It can be positive, it can be negative. In the positive aspect, mm. when you are happy, it's an emotion. Mm -hmm. But the negative aspect, we have, is the, the negative is even more than the positive. When you are talking about hunger, it's an emotion. You are talking about jealousy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's an emotion. You are talking about sorrow, mm -hmm. it's an emotion. You are talking about uh, pain, is an is an emotion. So, you know something that the, the, the soul, like I said, is a language. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that give it when you say a voice, mm -hmm. your emotion is your voice. You don't even mm -hmm. need to say it, yeah. but it's it's already telling them this is the way. That I feel. And when we even look at our Lord Jesus Christ, He also manages emotions. Mm -hmm. You ask me how. The Bible makes us understand that when He went to the temple and He saw a lot of buying and selling. things, buying and selling, and it's like, really? Can you guys be doing this in my father's house? The Bible makes us understand that He was hungry. But he said only that he was angry for sin. Yeah. He was able, he didn't say anything, but his action, you okay. know, the cry of the heart portrayed what he's saying that, no, 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 guys, just take this thing out. This place is not the market. There's a place for market, this is a place of worship. worship. Mm. I hope that we are getting it. Mm -hmm. And also, when Jesus did that, they are able to read from his action. From his emotion that no 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 this is not right you are not supposed to do this thing mm -hmm. and you ask me Bible make us understand also that we are fearfully and mm -hmm. wonderfully made mm -hmm. emotions God gives us emotion so that we will be able to do if the emotions prompt us to to be able to do something mm -hmm. God put the emotions in the life of Jesus so that we'll be able to portray that you know what you guys are doing is wrong. And you also put it in my life, in your life, for us, like the positive emotions. When you look at a sinner, and you can see that the way this person is eating, especially if you die today, it's going to end. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you have pity. You have the emotion for that person to say, oh my God. And, the, and that emotion is what a lot of people that they call evangelists, they say they have fire burning mm -hmm. in them. That fire is the emotion for them to go out and say, no. Give your life to Christ. Give your life. Not that you don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. There is a positive, is that emotion that God put in there. That's the reason that at times as a Christian we pray. That God give me the passion. Mm -hmm. Give me the emotions to for, for lost souls. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have emotions, if you don't have passion for it, you, can't. you can't do it. You cannot just say, let's go for our daily sin for me when I have to go out. If you don't have passion for it, you won't do it. Mm -hmm. That's a positive. And God put it there so that we'll, we'll be able to, to do something. But when you also look at the book of Exodus, in the life of Miriam, like I said, emotion is the cry of the heart. This woman has always been jealous of Moses. You professor, <laughs> you preach, you are the one that can sit down say the Lord. And it's happening in the church. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Are you the only one that can sing? Yeah. Even you dress nice, they say, 
you are fishing me. You are helping us. You are, you are, you are Mr. Price. You understand? My God, I love this blue you oh. And you do buy it. Ah, my God, you look so sweet. Even when people are complimenting me, they just, yeah, we have people like that. Yeah, yeah. Even you can see from their look, even when people are complimenting me when they are, they will not say anything. You can even see from the cry of the heart to say, I'm jealous. <laughs> she's the only one. Is she the only one that can see? And that's what I've and all it was, it's that. Mm. You see, all this is also an emotional God. They ask me mm. and why I said so. But it makes us to understand that it's a jealous mm. God. Mm. And like I said, emotion is one of mm. jealousy is mm. jealousy is one of the strength, mm. one of the, the different kinds of emotion. Negative. But emotion. God's own is a positive word. Mm. Yeah. And jealousy in a way that I cannot allow the devil to be to sitting on my children. I'm jealous, this is mine. Even us as a parent. We are jealous of our children. Yeah. You always want your children to be the best. Even when you go for the sport, you'll be shouting, you go run, run, run. Why are you saying run? <laughs> Other children are running. Why can't you say children? Come <laughs> on, you. Run. No, you'll be shouting <laughs> your child. <laughs> no, no, no. Run, no, 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 no. So that we can be the first. <laughs> you see, I'm talking of how God is. Yes. Mm, God is true. so jealous of us. Uh -huh. He said, you are mine. Mm, right. But when you look at Miriam, the other jealousy is like, why is it only Moses? Mm. Mm. Why is it only you that God is and He has been converting that hatred mm. in her mm. until the emotion makes her to speak it out. Mm. And God, God does not even do anything when she was even having the thought. The minute He's speaking, are you the only one? God punish her. Mm. He punish her. Even despite that Moses did not even know. And we have such in the church. Especially jealous. Yeah. People can be so jealous when God is facing you. They can be so jealous. Why? How? Why not me? Why can't you pray for the woman? Mm. Why don't you pray for the grace? Why don't you convert the grace and say, Father, the way you are using this sister, Lord, Use I'm available. Too. I'm available. God is not partial. Mm -hmm. He is not. If you give your life to Him, He will use you. He will give you the grace. He will give you the anointing. He said of you to get jealous. Even in the church, we have people that maybe you just tell them, Mama, even the way you wear this dress, can you even make it to come a little bit up? Oh my God. You it's have their emotions. <laughs> Who is she to talk to me? Mm. In education, we are not the same. Maritally, she's not my type. And then <laughs> we'll begin to give you the category of why <laughs> levels. Levels. <Yeah>. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You see levels where you cannot even tell them what to do. Mm. And some people, the emotions, they will not get home. That the emotion Keep begins them. to go from GI1 to 2, to GI2 to 3, 3 yeah. to 4. And the enemy is there to say, don't take nonsense. Mm -hmm. We know you are we know you are a Christian. But don't take nonsense. <laughs> we wish you to talk to you. And you are there emotions to begin to build up. And that build up mm -hmm. from generosity begin to yeah. get to anger. The anger will begin to get to reach. It will begin to escalate you. And you begin to say, you will not see me that quite fast. So sad. If they see me, they should cut this my bed. Who is see to talk to me? Mm -hmm. Because it's the hatred. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that in the spiritual, mm -hmm. in the spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. you know we we need to be very careful. Like I said, God put the emotions there for us to be able to do something. Mm -hmm. But it now lies to you. So to, to what do you do when you begin to feel this thing? Mm -hmm. What you do is that you go back to your maker. Mm -hmm. We are the clay, he is the one that molds us. Mm -hmm. Go back to him to say, Father, this is me. Mm -hmm. Help me. A songwriter says, I've done all I could, but it seems like nothing is doing me any good. We have people like that. On their own personality, they have tried not to get angry. On their own personality, they have tried not to get jealous. On their own personality, they have tried not to get moody. Yeah, they can just come to church and they are moody. And if somebody just asks, sister, what is it? I'm fine. <laughs> and even the way you are telling me, I'm fine. I want to also get angry. So because I asked of you, mm. are you feeding me? Mm. Are you paying my rent? You are you my husband? Now. You know? And we begin to see such mm. strife in the church. And when you look at strife, strife is caused by emotions. Mm. Sincerely, if you don't build on those things you are feeling, you will not get angry with her. If you don't, Sit on what you are feeling. You will not think of who is she to talk to me like yeah. this. Mm. Oh, let's clean the church. Ah, mama, please, can you also take the broom? Eh? Can't you even see the way I'm dressing? 
take broom. I'm old enough to be your mother. But when you begin to look at it, that this is the work of God. Mm. We are one before God. Who am I not to clean? You even take it with love, with pleasure to say thank you because you are going to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. So in everything that we do, we should lay everything to the hands of God. Mm. In one way or the other, the way God has created us, everybody has emotions. Yes. There is no boy that does not go. If the person says, I don't have emotion, then that person is a ghost. Mm -hmm. Then it's ghost have emotions. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer living. There as long mm -hmm. as you are breathing, you are living, you have emotions. Mm -hmm. even, even when you are even right standing with God, you have emotions. Mm -hmm. You are a woman being. You have feelings. But what do you do with that cry when the heart is crying? Is crying for you, be jealous, say no, 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 sit down there. My own time is coming. Mm -hmm. God bless me with my own car. He mm -hmm. say you have get angry. Who is the pastor to call you and tell you you come late to church? Because you came late to church, you cannot minister today. Come down. You to rest you don't come late to church. You understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. sisters? Mm -hmm. So we need to manage our emotion. One way or the other people will cross you. And one thing that the way that's the way I live my life. I live, people ask me, why are you so quiet? Something happened yesterday in my house. And mm -hmm. whenever I got home, when they told me, my daughter says, they've already discussed it before I get home. My husband, my daughter, and son. They say, no, no, mommy will not talk. She will say, it doesn't matter. Whenever I got home, hey, mommy, this is what happened when you are not at when you are where I get home. And we say, hey, it's, you see? You see that what we, we, you see what we say she's going to say. And I said, what do they expected me to get angry and say tomorrow I'm going to see that person? And the other person was telling me, Mama, please can I help you to even talk? I was like, no, it doesn't. Then I look at it. Because the way I live my life, I live my life that I am not Sister Maria. Mm. Sister Maria is not me. I cannot expect everybody to behave like me. The way you are, I accept you. Yeah. Even if they are affecting me, I might tell you. But if I now put you on my own standard, then I'm not making it right. Then I will begin to be more emotional because I want you to be like me. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk like me. I want you to behave like mm -hmm. me. I want you to walk like me, which is not possible. Yes. But when you now begin to have in mind that we are different, God created us in different mm -hmm. ways. Even the children that came from my womb, they are not me. Mm -hmm. So by the time you be there, you will be able to manage your emotions to say, okay, this is who she is. Mm. And if you know, pray for her. Mm. Pray for him. Oh, I love that angle you're coming from. Pray. I say, God, Lord, Father, help her. Help him sincerely with, with that mm. emotion that you have of pity to say, no, I don't like this in, in, in her. Amen. Amen. So in the spiritual aspect, we, we need to see that God puts it there for us to be able to do something mm. in a positive way, but not in a negative mm. way. And we are able to manage our emotion, not by our own power, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 That's powerful. Yeah, I think uh, what stood up for me in all that you have said is, you know, just um, trying to understand that we are all different. Because I think that's the mistake we make, even in, let's say, ministry or church. We assume that because our grace in tolerating certain things are, you know, better or our capacity of grace is better, we feel better off than others or we feel like, um, you know, people manage emotions in different ways, yes. but all the same, we pray that God will help and intervene in people that are not able to manage it properly. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, praying for that person. You can even you can take it as a personal prayer point. If you feel like this lady or this guy is actually having emotional issues. Take it as a point of duty to pray for that person. Make it your prayer point. And I believe that the Lord that who creates that person can through your prayer intervene. Amen. God bless you, Ma, for that Amen. wonderful take. Is there any more question, contribution, please? Let's feel free. Sister Ami, you've been quiet. Let's hear from you. <laughs> What's your take on the discussion? Okay, I think um, when it comes to emotions, uh, controlling emotions, um, Mama has already said a lot. Um, the key thing is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. No. You see? And I think she also mentioned it as yeah. well. So it's very vital as Christians for us to build, it's to develop. It doesn't come sudden mm. to develop the love, the joy, mm. and the fruit of the Holy Spirit listed in the, mm. in the book of um, Galatians. It takes the Spirit of God mm. 
take the fruit of the Holy Spirit to control mm. and to build our emotions, to channel our emotions to the right direction. direction. It takes the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, we cannot go over and emphasize that the fact that you want to manage your emotions, there will be instances, situations that will allow you to display your emotions. Mm. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is always there. That knowledge is always there. Mm. No. It's true, but let me give a practical example. Like, I normally say, mm-hmm. you know, in my place of work, you know, at times I will have it in mind. Okay, let, let me give you, even like this Monday, I left very early last week, Saturday, before that program went uh, in church. So, when my daughter came back, he said, No, mom, I told her, Take money from this place, take money, I told her to this. And she came and said, oh, Mommy, she didn't give you the money. I said, No, what? She'll come back and meet my mommy. When I got to the work on Monday, I was boring. I think everybody finished. When we finished, first, <laughs> when I would go to her, I said, I think she said, I'm the one that established this business for me. What? Mm-hmm. Well, you want to send me to the land of death? Mm-hmm. What is it? For three weeks now, you're not even giving me anything. Mm-hmm. Ah. And some people just think, Keep quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep quiet. Mm-hmm. In fact, it has always been happening to me. Right. Keep quiet. I said, Because I was boring. Mm-hmm. I want to talk. Something just mm-hmm. keep quiet. Then I say, Kenny, you know, you know the eyes I used to look at her. Can see? Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> you see that? <laughs> that eyes is like, why are you calling me? You are holding me. You are calling me. <laughs> <laughs> then this is one of our friends that came from Bali. So mm-hmm. she was. I didn't even know they are friends. She was just doing the thing, and she told me, "Come, Kenny, come and do business." Even the back end was open, and. She normally she, she told me that she always stayed in Lady Power to buy the stock and mm-hmm. all that. I started telling me, bring six uh go, bring the wood, bring this, bring this. I started writing it down. Ah. And I took a big class and put everything there. I calculated all the money, I calculated it, and they came back gave me the money catch. I said, Hey, God, I wanted to fight you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Before your fault. Yeah. She I didn't know she wanted to use her friend to buy all the money that it was wow. so quiet. Wow. If I let her in there, I was sleeping. Say, Ken, why are you sleeping? You have made money for the go. <laughs> she told me go. You have made money from all of all of all even the cost of this. I think that was just reward from God. I was like, being, God, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Lord. Okay. I would have mm-hmm. lost. Yeah. And I even told her, please, mm-hmm. anytime your friend comes to Dover, don't go outside again. Mm-hmm. Come here. Come here. Even mm-hmm. since that time today, I've not asked her for the money. <laughs> I was even thinking today, I'm going to ask her. I was like, no, let me call you when I get outside. Sissy, you know you are saying. I was like, God, if I have thoughts, mm. I was born for the whole weekend. Let me just get to that place of work. Of work. <laughs> so wow. keep quiet. Mm. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I have mm. lost that sum of money. Mm. Mm. And maybe the money you were actually wanted to collect. Very small compared to, to that. that. In fact, it's time seven. <laughs> but I said that I want to have lost that customer. I would have lost. And she, she still want to give me that one. I would have lost that one. And she would not even have given me that one. <laughs> and I said, God, you are good. Mm. No, God will help us. And what, mm. what, sincerely, mm. we are human beings. Mm. Mm. If we say emotions will not come, we are lying. Mm. Viewers, if you are saying you are not going to feel anything, it's a lie. Mm. As long as the blood is flowing, mm. you feel it. Mm. There is what you do with the emotions. With the emotions. Mm. That matters, and you mm-hmm. can listen to the Holy Spirit. Because even when I was telling you people, I can say, Holy Spirit, you know what? Let them let me deal with them. Because mm-hmm. they thought I'm very quiet and they fool, I'm not a fool. But it's, it's as if the power overpower me. Mm. So just keep quiet. And immediately I came, I was just sitting like this, doing a lot of things, you know, um, studying. Do, mm. And he said, Can you come? I said, God, thank you. Wow. God will help us. Wow. <laughs> I'm really blessed. I'm sure you sisters are blessed too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think uh, with issue of um, jealousy, especially in the church, mm-hmm. um, that issue, uh, I really want us, it's quite sensitive, but I was sharing this with my daughter, I think two days ago, we were studying the open heavens, and she said, mommy, I think everybody feels jealous too. When my friend comes with something I don't have, there's that thing that is always that little thing, you know, that they come on your phone like, one you know, and I told her, I said, everybody has it, even me. Which of us here sitting there will say, I've never felt that sting, sting, Why not me? sting, mm-hmm. in some way, in some slightest way. But how do we react when it comes 
like what do you, do you speak to it because i remember when one or two instances i was like that i would just feel I'm like in the name of jesus i can't this immediately i'll start complimenting that person mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. Because I will That's also remind myself that everybody has got a purpose. Yeah. Everybody has got an assignment. Yes. That her own time to shine has come. Why don't you celebrate? Mm -hmm. Because the God that did it for her can also do it for you. Mm -hmm. You know? So as, as much as we understand that God has created us all for a particular assignment, um, we should always remind ourselves. Sometimes some people zone are very, you know, out there. Some people are very private, but the Lord that sees reward us all diligently. Mm -hmm. I think viewers, we should have that at the back of our mind. Don't think anyone is shining better than you are because mm -hmm. God gives the accolades and will reward us all diligently in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Evangelist uh, Oluchi, please ask something. Evangeline. <laughs> all of us are evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I saw Evangeline something on your Evangeline. That's oh, okay, that's your name. I thought it was okay. Evangelist. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful name. Yeah, mm. thank you so much. Oh. Um, I'll be talking on emotion management in parenting. Yeah, emotion management in parenting is the ability for parents to be able to recognize, understand, and be able to effectively manage or let me say control, let me not use that mm. word manage again, and be able to control their own emotion in such a way that it will bring a healthy well-being and as well as promote their interaction with their children mm -hmm. or their child, as the case may be. Mm. Now, in uh, just like you said, there is negative and there is also positive, positive emotion. Mm -hmm. In parenting, it also goes that way. When you talk of uh, positive emotion, you think of the profound compassion you have for your children. Mm. Or the joy in your heart when you see them accomplishing milestones. Mm. You know, or when you see them fulfilling destiny. Mm. And you see those as um, the positive, the negative. And then when you talk of the, the, the negative emotion, you talk about the, you think of that moment when you think it, it looks like your your child is not safe, the worries in your heart, the panic, the fear, you see that as negative emotions. Mm. But then in managing emotion, I would just say that emotion management in parenting is just all about you, the strategies of being able to, to replace your negative emotions with your positive emotions. Mm. Mm. And in doing such, you see, um, all we need is just self-control. That's true. Self-control. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 25, verse 28, it says, a man without self-control is like a city broken into mm. and left without walls. Mm. And you know when a city is left without walls, mm. it's vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. The same thing happens to us mm. human beings mm. when we we lack that self-control we are vulnerable to all manner of attacks ranging from as a parent ranging from high blood pressure from there you talk about uh sometimes it releases the hormone mm. it releases stress hormone into our body so and that is why it is very very important for us to control our emotions in parenting and in controlling our own emotions, let us understand that our children, the first school our children goes, is the home school. Mm -hmm. They learn very, very fast by observing. They observe you, they are watching you. Mm -hmm. They know what you are doing, and that is also what they will grow up to be doing. If that is why it's very, very important for us to control it. And um, in controlling it, there is no how we can control what we are not even aware of. Mm. You have to first of all okay. identify it. Mm. When you identify that, oh, this is how I behave when this happens. There are two things now. You have to identify it mm. and then try and know when what triggers it. Yeah, mm. the triggers. Try and know mm. what triggers it. And then that will now bring me to giving us some of the triggers. 
of emotional outbursts in parenting. The triggers differs from one parent to the other, depending on the circumstance around and depending on the, the situation and depending on the ages of the children That's that are true. involved. True. Yeah, the first one I'll be talking about is uh, stress, fatigue, overwhelmness. And when you talk of that one, you remember the time, <laughs> the time when you will be at work, you will be thinking of what else do you have to do at home? How do you fetch your, school, your children from school? How do you get uh, um, lunch prepared for them? How do you do this? How do you do that? Trying to balance the work activities with the household chores, especially when you don't have a helper in the house. Mm. You think of how to balance both house chores, uh, work activities, how you are going to take care of your children. Sometimes it even deprives you of sleep. Mm. You'll be the first to wake up in the morning <laughs> and you are still the last you are still the last to go to bed. So sometimes all this can be frustrating mm -hmm. sometimes if you don't have help mm -hmm. so and it can lead to emotional outbursts then another another one is when there is a challenging behavior in the life of any of your children mm -hmm. you must have done probably you you've done everything within yeah. your capability and mm -hmm. you see that this child is still behaving this way and there is nothing you can do. It can be frustrating. It can lead to emotional outburst. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back to how we are going to treat it. Mm -hmm. And then another one is financial pressure. Mm -hmm. The cost of raising your children, mm -hmm. especially in homes where there is financial constraints. Mm -hmm. The money is not there, yet you need to pay the school fees of your children, yet you still need to pay the house rent, you still need to pay for health care of your children. Mm -hmm. You still need to take care of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Think of what they eat, what they wear. What they... All of those can lead to emotional outburst. And then another one is unmet expectation. All parents, mm -hmm. if I should ask all of us now, you have expectations for your mm -hmm. children. I want my children to be like this, to mm -hmm. be like that. Mm -hmm. I want them to study this, to study that. And then when you now see that these expect expectations of yours is not tallying with what your children are doing, you become so frustrated. Mm. So in this, let's at least recognize that children have their different, like let me say, no two kids are it's born to have the same taste, the same ability, mm -hmm the same thoughts and even when they are twins identical twins they still have their own differences mm -hmm. uniqueness mm -hmm. so let us always have that at the back of our, our mind when we are pushing our kids to do something let's always have that at the back of our mind mm -hmm. and then there is another outburst that comes from personal maybe from past 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 traumas. Mm, past, past traumas. traumas. Oh, let's let's call it past traumas mm. or past unresolved events. Yes. You yes. have not resolved it. It's still mm. eating you up. And then mm. your child. Okay, let's say for example, you grow up in a family where you are not allowed to express your feelings. Mm. It's what mom says and what mom says, mm. what daddy says. You don't have your own say See. in the family. And then now you are married. You have your own children, and your child. You tell your child this is what you do. And your child says, Mommy, no, this is what I want to do, and these are the reasons. That will take you back to those yeah, days right. when you have no say. And sometimes you see the mood just change. Mm. Not because of what the child is saying, but it took you back to that past time. You feel deprived. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm, that's the way. That. So that is that. And then now we now move to how are we going to manage this emotion number one let's always try to understand our children let's not expect them fine sometimes they have to understand us but we know you try to check your children know their capability what they're capable of doing mm -hmm. and what they can do know the talents in them 
not trying to impose what you want on okay. them on them because you are a doctor, you can't say, okay, because I'm a doctor, my child must also be a doctor mm -hmm. so that he or she succeeds me. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so they also have their own uh, thing. They have what they have in mind. They have their capability, what they want to do. And the key in this is prayer. Mm. Pray, especially when these children are still very yeah. young they can't pray for themselves mm. pray and ask god for divine direction mm. on god what do you what want these children have. to be mm. wow. and when you pray and god probably god has spoken to you and the child is still like this is what i want to do try and let the child in the rightful way mm. not shouting at the child sit the child down and let the child understand what you are trying to say you see, the Bible says, do not be anxious mm -hmm. of anything, but in every anything. situation, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your petitions to God, and peace that surpasses all understanding will direct your mind. Yeah. And that is why we need that prayer in that aspect. Um, I was opportunity just in my house, I was going upstairs, and I met a young lady, a white girl, she said she's 17 years old hmm. and we just greeted her how are you she said she's not fine why she said her mom just got her upset what happened they're coming from pick and pay okay where is your mom she left her at pick and pay what happened a conversation was brought up she's going for her matric she'll be going for matric dance they call it matric dance yes. right? yes. and then what her mom wants for her is Probably that's what they have been doing for them. The, her own mom have been yeah, doing for course. her. She said they, they want to take her to some coast, invite friends and families, eat, dine together. <laughs> but this child said, I said I don't want, I want to go for photo shoots and that's all. The mom said, no, what I want mm. is what Fish. you will do. <laughs> so sometimes let's try to understand them, look mm. things from their own mm. perspective. Mm. Because the life, when we live our own life, it's that's different. all it is. It's very different from what mm. is happening now. Mm. So let's try and understand them sometimes <laughs> and know how to, to manage. And because you're managing your emotion. Mm. One, you have to do away with, try and do away with things that will... You already know your triggers. Yes. Now try as much as possible to like look for a way not to bring those things up. That's why I said prayer. When you pray, listen to your children, see things from their own um, perspective. That's one. Then I know that do not compare your child with any other child. Mm -hmm. That this child, they are of the same age, and the other one is performing better than the other one. It doesn't mean that the other one doesn't know. They have mm -hmm. their different uniqueness mm. understand your children understand their capability mm. so that when they start doing the other one you won't be provoked mm. that's just it trying to avoid what triggers your emotion that is that and then another one is know that school education is not life but it's just part mm. a way a way to life mm. part of life let me put it that way because some people will be like, I mean, this person has attained this doctorate degree, that's that. You, what are you doing? You are just in my house, oh my eating my God. food, doing this and that. Mm -mm. Understanding your children's capability matters a yeah. lot. Mm. It matters a lot. Mm. And prayer, mm. guidance, asking for guidance from the, from the Holy Spirit to know how to direct these children matters a lot. And that your child says, okay, you want her to be this, uh, she wants to be this, okay, I want to be a musician. You say, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be a doctor. No, mommy, I want to be a musician. Be a dancer. Give them the support they need. <laughs> if possible, put them, organize training for them. Mm -hmm. Make them to be the best, the, musician. the most famous musician in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the support you just or need to give them. Or footballer. All children, they are not destined. Not they have the different destinies. destinies. Mm. So just try and find out the destiny of your children and know how to help them, how to support them. Mm. Prayerfully support mm. them and give them the courage they need.
to be the best of what they want to become. Mm -hmm. Praise wow. God. Hallelujah. Ooh, you said a mouthful. Sister Vera. This is your area, so let's go again. <laughs> Children's stuff. Oh I mean, my goodness. Wow. That's our area. Wow. Uh, I want to pick up on one thing that she said. Okay. And uh, I want viewers also to be very attentive with this thing. Which a lot of us as parents, not only mothers, we need parents, mm -hmm. both fathers and mothers. We are not really controlling our emotions on them, and it's happening to almost like all the parents. Mm. She said something that we should not compare children. Mm. When we are talking about comparison and talking of showing love, that she said something that the way the pregnancy is different, that is how the children are different. Exactly. Children are not the same. Mm. Don't compare that. Hey, see your sister. <laughs> She's taking first every time you. You are just eating my food in this house. <laughs> eh? I, will, I put you in extra class. I put you in this. You don't know anything. And you go out and you go to KFC. You bought a, a ice cream. You give it to the first one. You, you didn't give it to the other one. Mm. You, you, are my, you, are, you, are, you are my child. You, you, you took after me. You see this one? Maybe you took after your father's life, <laughs> your father's family. And the child will begin to look at you. Mm. I'll begin to mm. grow hatred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sentiments. The sentiment. Mm -hmm. I heard of a story, true life story. Mm -hmm. Is it not this week or last week? Of a Christian home. They, they, they have two children. And one is good academically more than the other. And they started showering the other one. They make sure they sent that one to where you will not be afraid in life. Maybe to a doctorate degree or something. Yeah. And the other one was having the hatred in art that okay. Oh, he's the only child Abby. Yeah. I was their hair now head is told down the day of the graduation. The June the same father, the same mother. The junior brother came with a gun mm -hmm. and shot him. Oh and said, Okay, let us see your pride now. Mm. Oh he shot him. Do you know the time the hatred started? From, when they from childhood. Mm. We do it unconsciously, unconsciously. at times, mm. viewers. Mm. At times you love a child more than the other. And at times you show it unconsciously. Mm. And the others will begin to pick. pick it and say, oh, okay, this is the favorite of our parents. Mm. Oh, you are, God's, you are mommy's favorite. Go to her. If you ask her anything, she will do for you. And they will begin to push you. You too, you go, mommy, they say, we know she will. Tell your children, guys, I love you all. Mm. You came from my womb. I don't love you. I always do that to my two daughters. Say, hey, hey, girls, I love you the same. Don't ever have it in mind that I love this one more. If I buy anything for this one, it does not mean I don't love you because mm. she needs it mm. at that time and mm. you don't need it. Mm. So I pick up from what he says that we need to control our emotions in that. Mm. And it affects the children psychologically. When they begin to pick it that you love a child more, mm. they won't tell you. They won't tell you that mommy, eh, you love children more than me. No, but that hatred. Even at times, when you look at some people that don't take care of their parents when they grow, ask them why. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> ask them why. They will mm. say, let her go. I agree, it's our first mom when we are growing up that she was taken care of. She left or she thought I cannot be anything in life. Mm. They see where I am today. Mm. Ask a lot of people. You know why people behave? You don't know why. Mm. Don't quickly judge people when mm. I'm not saying it's right, fears. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the story, you will know that it's because the true. parents did not control their emotions when they are raising those kids mm. as a parent. And those children have grown a seed. And now it's harvest time when they are old. Mm. And they say, I will show you. I agree, thought I won't be anything in life. You didn't take care of me. You love my siblings more mm. than me. So God will help us Amen. to give all our children equal love. Mm. And if we are doing that, it's, there's a way now to repent mm -hmm. and to adjust. Yeah. Mm. And to call your children one or the other, I love you more. Mm. You came from my womb. You come the same place. You are my children. Let them constantly be telling them. 
so that they will not have that seed of hatred mm. against their siblings and against you as a mm. parent. Wow, thank you. Wow. Mm -hmm. hey. Hey. Let, me add, let me add something to mm -hmm. what she just said now. Actually, as we are looking at it from the children's perspective of not comparing, which that is one thing you know I always preach about, but also parents sometimes do not know better. Mm. It is how they were brought up. Yes. So <laughs> it is yes. By default, is, you just... give what you have. <laughs> it is how they were brought up. Mm. In the past, or maybe in the ancient days, you find out that they saw it like comparison to make the child. They, they saw it as a challenge. Mm. It worked for them then, where they saw it as a challenge. But these days, children are more exposed, mm. so they know better. Mm. You know, like before you talk, now they'll tell you my mental health. So everybody, <laughs> yeah, even child, say six years old, will tell you my mental health. So, uh, or like before, we don't <laughs> used to hear about mental, mental health and all that. Mm. So you find out that it is what they know. Mm. So even as adults as churches organizations it's good that we speak about those things mm -hmm. say that keep, yeah. keep talking to parents about it because somebody said you cannot teach an adult to use to be left-handed you teach an adult to be left-handed from childhood so if a parent is going to change from such a character it's it's not automatic mm. so it is something people keep talking about it and you find those who they respect talk about it they will not realize that these things are wrong mm. if it is something they have been doing and those who are i know somebody that if you talk from now to tomorrow say, the way my mother trained me that is the way i will train my <laughs> children <laughs> that is the way i will eat i did not die I, uh, they beat me, they did this, I did not die. Mm. But you find out that even you, that you are saying that the way they train you, you, you find yourself that, that you are bitter inside mm, you. So why. because of you want to yeah. decide, yeah. you know, that thing must happen. So mm. it, it, it's not because that is actually what you want. It is what you have that you are beginning to mm. give. Mm. Mm. So you, even, you won't even realize that you yourself, you need help. Mm. <laughs> you need help, but you don't know it. So that's the thing. No, but when people they respect keep saying it and preaching about it, I think it will make it. Added to preaching about it, I think the Holy Spirit too. Yeah. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit because I think with raising my first daughter, I fell victim of this. I tried to I was the first daughter, so my mom raised me with if I there yeah, most of the time I thought I was a nanny. <laughs> I started cooking at the age of eight. My mom would travel for weekends. I'll be the one to be taking care of the younger ones back in there. So it almost when we're now growing up, even to sit and watch TV with them in the sitting room, I almost feel like I'm not supposed to be sitting mm. in the sitting room. You know that kind of impression. If when they had grown up, they were four girls and it was their time to cook. It was the day I went to I went to make my hair and was the immediate one was cooking and she was playing and the food got burnt. I take the beating for her. I take the beating for when they're not around and they, they made mistake and they go out and all of that. So that thing was in me. And I started raising my own daughter with, yeah. you have to be responsible for the other one, this and that. And it was recently, like, you know, when she started talking with friends and started realizing, she started feeling, because, okay, as I started, you know, in parenting, I started listening more. As I said, growing spiritually, I started hearing the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes if I knock my sons and the Holy Spirit say, we need to do that. Just sit the boy down on top. So that prompt is started making me. I started adjusting in my parenting. But now, uh, my first daughter started feeling deprived because the strictness and everything I used on her, I'm, you didn't use it I'm no longer now. doing that with the younger ones. So from time to time we always have that discussion, especially with the last one. Now with the last one, quarter quarter, that one is even on a, a personality on my own that is sometimes they tire me. I don't even have, and the energy is no longer there like it mm. was then. Yeah. So that needs to make my first daughter feel so deprived. If it were me, you would have beaten me. Now look at how you just allow her to go with this one. I can't even believe it. If I should even beat that one on my own. On, on <laughs> <laughs> So it's something where I'm personally, and I'm saying this because there might be viewers watching, 
Uh, I think the essence of this discussion is not just for us to come here and appear perfect. I still have a lot, mm -hmm. um, a lot that um, the way I'm being led at the Spirit of God is to even share my own flaws, my mistakes, so that viewers can relate and also see how to help themselves too. And that they are not alone. They should know that they are not alone. So as much as I was speaking about this, these are the things that even me personally, from time to time, I sit with my daughter and we have that talk. Then with regards to this 17-year-old you were talking about, mm -hmm. I think yesterday, I had a discussion with this same daughter of mine that is turning 16 next year. This girl has made me bought her dinner gown and she has been telling today she will say we are going to Balito Hotel. I think it's Balito Hotel. I'll do my sweet 16. Mm. This, this, is And I'm like, God, oh, if I don't have the money, then what would I do? This child will, I don't know. You know, so when she tells us, okay, really, is that what the plan is? Okay, well, tomorrow she says another place will go and all that. So, but I'm just waiting and hoping that when the time, I keep explaining to her that, see, my darling, the money we don't know whether we'll have, but let's see how it goes. I don't want to cancel it out and say no, you cannot do which can they do what is this sixteen? Did I have six sixteen during my own time? Oh. You know, you have to adjust because I've taken her to a couple of friends with sixteen and I saw how their parents, you know, made it beautiful for them. Yeah. So I, I as much as maybe the money might not be there or the budget, you try and make that child understand and to the size of your pocket you can do. You know, as you said, we should just try and meet them halfway and mm -hmm. Not imposing yeah, the way yeah, we were yeah, being made. There was nothing like Swiss 16 when I was growing up. I don't remember if there was anything. So even our children, anyway. is only, there are always another opportunity for us to correct the mis mistakes that our parents made. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was also going to raise that, that, you know, in, as a mom, mm. I've also uh, realized that my children are my mirror to reflect wow. on how I, on how I've healed. Mm. On how I've grown into becoming a mom on a daily basis because mm -hmm. you know it's so easy for us to project who we are on them and mm. to to exactly want them to be us. Mm. You know, I'm an academic mom, and unfortunately, my kids are academic and sports, mm -hmm. very much on sports, mm. and I'll be very angry at times because they don't see my heart. Why am I looking for my heart on them? <laughs> Why am I looking for me on them? She's so, and later on when I sleep, oh I'll God. see myself. You know, you know I, I, I think for me, mother would have really helped me because it's like a mirror. I can see myself like, okay, uh -huh. okay, mommy, mommy, you've done this and this and that to me, to this child. Mm. Okay, can you take it back? Is it them or, or you? You, mm. you know, and what can you do better? Mm. You know, and I feel like it's very much also important for us to heal mm. on our past trauma. Yes, That's true. Exactly. because you know, for me, um, like we were too many at home. My mom was married, and my mom was married, and mm. then went back home, mm. and it was us and them. <laughs> you know, mm. that's how I've, I've always referred to it. Mm. But we were a big family. Mm. Now, at least I can say we were a big family. But back then, I'm saying it was us and them, of which mm. it was wrong on its own. Because it made me see all these little mistakes, you know, that, okay, mm. this one do this, okay, that one, okay, just because we are this one, mm. you know. So, um, we've got so much on us as well. Yeah. And it's it's very much important. I think it goes back to what you were saying. It's very much important to work on yourself so much. Mm -hmm. Then it's easy for you yeah, to be so able to cool. understand others, mm -hmm. uh, accommodate them. Because you know, also for me as a mom going through divorce, I'd see my husband and my children. And at yeah. that time, we're not in speaking terms. I hate him so much. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, and my child would do something that my husband would, and I'll be like, yo. Sure. How come the head in my house would you bring your dad? You know those things. So I feel like it's very much important to work on yourself. Work constantly on yourself to become to work on your healing, you know, work on your past traumas. And so then you can raise a, a healthy, healthy generation. Children. A healthy wow. generation. Because you know, like I'm saying at home we were too many. And unfortunately my character wasn't more like of them so i felt so alone so alone i mean like my mom we, we were three three girls and five boys mm -hmm. and then my mom's parents they also had six or seven mm -hmm. there were too many girls for me to feel alone but because I, my character couldn't go match, with, match them. with them i felt like i was just like a lone fighter you know mm -hmm. just on my little corner 
and I think that has also contributed into how I raise my, my kids mm. in, on a positive note because I can be able to pay attention to them as individuals because another thing it's like I'm raising my children you you have to get to a point of understanding that you are raising Kanye you are raising Piwe mm. you are an individual the because they are different individuals mm. and you see it on the on their behavior and mm. it will make you like very angry if you do not understand that these are siblings but different individuals mm. so yeah i was just wanted to reflect on the fact that we also have to reflect yeah. on us no, reflect on you mm. work mm. on yourself so mm. much that you are able to see people for who they are without mm. projecting yourself so from them yeah Wow, thank you so much for that contribution. Wow, let's move on to Sister <laughs> Wow, <laughs> Sister Amlo, I'm mean, sorry. Yeah. All right, hello viewers once again. Um, so I'll be speaking on the topic, managing emotions in marriage, yeah. which is very critical because um, marriage is a blessing anyway. Yeah. Maybe I should start from that. Let's start with knowing your name. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I do I need to go for nah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, to go back to what I was saying, mm -hmm. I said marriage is a blessing. Um, it's a blessing from, from God. Uh, that's why God so Adam I said it is not good for this mm -hmm. man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Um, let him let him give let me give him a companion, a mm. partner. So mm. it's a companionship thing, kind of things when all the world turns against you, you should be able to find that love in terms of the person you call your spouse. Mm. So and the Bible also says so I will be saying making reference to a lot of scripture because it's marriage mm -hmm. and that yeah. marriage is a foundation. Is founded in, in mm -hmm. the word of God. So I think where most people get it wrong is because they try to borrow other things from outside, which is quite okay if you want to spice your marriage. But the roots of your marriage should be in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says one will chase, chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight. But also the Bible says can two work together. Yes, yeah. 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 So there's so many Emotions, we've talked about, we've defined emotions, I don't want to go, yeah. we've defined <laughs> different kinds of Repeating. emotions, so mm -hmm. I don't want to repeat uh, what has been said again. Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to draw attention is, um, marriage is unique, as well as um, people are unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will take, for example, life experience. So when I got to South Africa, I came to join my husband here. So there was already a car. So I was expecting my... Uh, to start driving immediately. <laughs> my husband's personality, she's is kind of different for me. It's more organized. He, maybe I would say more focused. He, he, he likes to alight what he will do this year, next year, next year, which is a good thing. Is one of the strengths I see in him. I will talk about that when that strength starts becoming irritating to you. Like this one is now too much. Be cool. So. He's a melancholy. Huh? <laughs> He's a melancholy. <laughs> so, but me, I'm like, okay, the, the more we last, mm -hmm. let's go with the flow. God, we take care of the yeah, future. Like, mm -hmm. why are you so scared, skeptic about the future? Mm -hmm. The future is set. But he's, he knows that, but he still wants to make his own mm -hmm. plan as well. So I was like, okay, I want to start driving. He said, no, not now. Let's settle down a bit, try and understand the, the, system. the system. Well, initially, I, I was like, ah. I mean, can't you see other women are driving? Like, <laughs> <laughs> are they better than me? I'm, I didn't know like that. I was so angry then. But then, you know, you take everything to go down. It was so, this thing I just mentioned, I was, I'm just laughing about, it was so deep in my heart then, just the issue of driving, you know. Mm -hmm. I forget to focus on other things that he was doing good. Mm -hmm. I concentrate on that. that. Start for that period, mm -hmm. and it was not a very nice period because anything he does, even if he's doing the good thing, I will always stop paying what's there, mm -hmm. okay? Because this person is not allowed. You can't see any other thing that he does the dishes, oh. he does every other thing in the house. <laughs> I wasn't seeing because that is my, where my focus was <laughs> on. So I couldn't see that. So I think in marriage, you should learn appreciation over expectation. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that have worked for me. So we should focus on appreciating our, our spouse. Mm -hmm. What is that thing that you saw that you joined? 
Imo Hatuni Shani. Yeah. What is he that you saw? I was like, oh, okay. Um, this this person, I like this person, and I would like mm. to spend the rest of my life with that. Mm. We should not expect. The Bible said, cast all your cares yes. on him. Mm. He's the only one that can meet our expectations yes. of marriage. Mm. No, anybody can. We should just enjoy our spouse. Let's flow with him. Not mirror expectations. Oh, I expect him to open the doors of the car for me when I walk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I know a couple that actually do that, like so seriously. The uh, man sat down. The man went round. Are they African? How many times have you done I told my wife, I said, "Don't ever do that. Sorry. I will just sit down." You never can tell what is behind what is that. that. My that's pastor that's said, that's "No, probably the the door to that is spot." No, this one is not a spot. It's a new car. It's not spot. Sorry to cut you short. Okay, I'm going to the church mm. where the man is always opening the door mm. for the lady, <laughs> and the lady will majestically come and they are going before he gets there. The woman, the man will open the door. So this thing continued for a long time, and the whole women in the church went gaga that their husband is not opening doors mm. for them. They will mm. make reference to the man. Yeah, so something the thing <laughs> came to the notice of the pastor, <laughs> and the pastor <laughs> called the the man mm -hmm. and was like see what you are doing is causing a problem in the church and the man said it's not because i am so gentle to be opening the door for my wife the door is actually bad so you need somebody to always come out and open it from, from the outside behind. so that she can step out that is the thing that is it's not because that every time she wants to come out and marry she not come my husband is not good at showing this what do they call it display of affection outside we see the like what they call it outside but I remember when I give birth to my baby three weeks ago, I can leave my kids, babies with him for the whole day and I'm fine. He will take care of him. So I look at that, mm. focus on what Service. is working. Yeah. What's your, the strength of your husband? Mm. Don't compare. Oh, mm. we normally wear the same clothes together. Why are we not wearing the same clothes <laughs> together? Why? And your husband doesn't like those PDFs. So focus on all those things. Let us mirror our expectation on God. God is the source of our happiness. Mm. No spouse can make you happy at all. Mm. No, no spouse or whatsoever can make you happy. You have to be responsible take responsibility of your happiness. Yeah. I will be happy, I will be so joyful. Mm -hmm. In, whether this man makes me happy mm. or not, I will be joyful. It's very difficult because we feel that marriage should be like, you should be into me. But we have different values, like you said, two individual different mothers, different personality, different behaviors, the yeah. value system, the way he was brought up is different from the way I was brought sure. up. So you can't expect him to fulfill or to change the values. So part of unrealistic expectation in marriage is expecting your spouse to change their values to become like yours. No, because values are something rooted, it cannot mm. be changed. Another um, unrealistic expectation is trying to expect your husband to, or your spouse to react the same way you react. Can't you react like this? Can't you see that this matter is it's urgent? Is mm -hmm. and your spouse is just calm. Ah, and you, you. So it's, it's, it's it, we case. can't expect your spouse mm. to react. And then communication is key, mm. very key in marriage because we can't avoid our spouse at workplace. I can still avoid my um, my colleague if I don't want to talk to if I'm not in the mood. But in the home, you cannot yeah. just mm. when you walk, you, you wake up, it's in your face, you go to the kitchen, it's there, you share the same toilet, it's there. <laughs> so you cannot avoid the avoidance mm. method will not work. It might maybe work for maybe for, for a few hours. But you know, you you will can as a Christian wife or as a Christian husband, you know that no, we cannot because the everyone cannot dwell in an atmosphere of tension, you mm. see. And it reflects mm. on the children as well, too, as, yeah. my, mm. as my uh, mm. mama said, it reflects on the children as well. You determine, the spouse determine the tension, the atmosphere in the home. So let's ensure, I think one of the mm, uh, major reasons for emotional outburst in marriage is unmet expectation. expectation. Trying to tell this, please, can you meet my expectation?
application no it will never let's focus on appreciation it does this thing i'm going to focus on it this is what it does well let me focus on it and mm. leave other things let mm. me focus on this thing that is doing well and leave other things i think um yeah thank, thank you so much thank you so much wow very very awesome. good one mm. That's a good one. Yeah. The king is yeah. just just contribute something to what she has said. <laughs> Let me not be biased. I don't want to say something that <laughs> other people because when she said no man can no couple can make you happy, my own husband makes me happy. This mm. <laughs> no, 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 able to make you happy the things she does yes you should be able to make but that was for viewers that are passing through experiences mm. and like mm. expecting your husband to be the source of your happiness 100 yeah. percent mm. maybe you should have relationship outside i do have relationship that outside some couples see what worked for you i have a built relationship outside that of my husband people that like Christian sister that I can talk with as well mm. too. Mm. When there's some situation for people passing through challenges in their mm. marriage, I think for that space, try and find something to build on, something mm. that will bring joy to you, mm. something that will depend. So because you need to also discipline your emotion too as well. You need to also manage your emotion. You need mm. to also make sure that you're in, you're in the right space of mind at the same time. Mm. So maybe it's, if it's books, read books. Yeah. If it's listening to some, li li listen to some for home people, but yeah, more ministration, some ministration, listen to the word of God, things. Because oh, so many women built up this thing in their heart and it causes these sicknesses and mm, diseases over mm, time. Mm. Find something to make you joyful. Joy is in the word of God. Mm. Joy is in making solid relationship with other Christian people. P Christian mm. people, I mean real Christians, not everybody goes yeah. to church. Mm. People that you can pray with. I have that I have those channels of people that I pray with. I like my husband and I we pray together. But I still have relationships that are solid mm. outside marriage. Thank, thank you so much. I think I just want to add to that. Because even sometimes men are so overwhelmed mm. with their own things that there are sometimes I'm like, baby, so I just really need someone to talk to right now. I'm like, baby, I'm I'm just coming from the theater before I go to the mass morning. Mm -hmm. So at first I used to get, you know, mm. angry that at this doctor walking. You know, it's not available. But as I started growing in marriage, I started realizing that no, I can actually build support mm -hmm. Christian small sisters. And I realized that there are also sisters in my shoes mm -hmm. where their husbands are not emotionally available. Mm -hmm. It's not because they choose not to, but because they too. So it's not because they don't love their wife. Uh, it's not because they, 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 they because yeah. maybe work and all that related thing. So as you said, building a Christian structure, you might not necessarily even be church sisters. Mm. You know, most yeah. sisters I pray with, they are not even my church members. Mm. Very far away friends that we just go to things together, together and, and hold hands and we pray virtually through the phone and we check on each other, how are you doing today, I hope you are, you know. And that does not mean you leave your husband mm -hmm. out, out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But just understanding the fact that maybe you might not always be available as much as you want. That will also help you not to get frustrated yeah. unnecessarily yeah so i think that's why i'm just bringing that in thank you so much and this i may add that. is very important to understand uh, the male gender mm -hmm. one thing that causes a problem in marriages is first Understand the opposite gender. If a if a wife understand the male gender and how they are created, how they behave, how they react to matters, mm -hmm. then understand your spouse's temperament mm -hmm. and personality mm -hmm. traits. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, you find out that, that managing conflicts and emotions will be very mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. for you. It will be very easy. You will know when the person is available for you to speak mm -hmm. and communicate with the person. Like there are times when, okay, I'll use myself as an example. If you are talking to my husband, once he's back from work, it's to your tent to Israel. You're on your own. <laughs> but he does one thing. He will be answering, yes. Mm. I know. Mm. Okay. Mm. But not to make you feel bad. Mm. But the truth is that you are talking to yourself. He is not there's listening. Not you know, he's, he's not there. <laughs> but early in the morning, before he goes to work, yeah. you are gisting with him normally. Mm. Not that let like, come and sit down, let's talk. The moment you do, <laughs> we have to talk about something. It doesn't work. It will mm. piss him off. 
just gisting and talking and you are chipping what you want to and he's responding he's there with you so that's the thing once you and most men are like that except for those who have trained themselves not to be why because if we look at the bible from the book of genesis god gave him, the man when he created him he gave him work he gave him work and for the woman he brought her as a helper and to nurture that is our basic function that's our role so when he don't be surprised that he's 80 percent into his work and 20 percent into you mm. he just you that need to understand and, mm. and then his personality and then you talk of uh, his temperament and whatever all builds up to, together. together to make yeah. him who he is mm. and so that is where the foundation and the problem always begins if you can get that 80 percent of the problem in the marriage Mm. Mm. Thank you. Finding that time to talk, you know, because sometimes we women we experience emotional outbursts, <laughs> isn't it? From my yeah. so, so, and that's one thing I've learned during the course of my marriage. You know, understanding who my husband is, I react easily. Me, I'm, I'm easily angered. I'm easily angered. But what God has been helping me out with, especially with my marriage, is um, trying to know when to approach my husband and. Because the moment you come with your eyes, you need to go listen to me. In fact, you will just wear slippers and it's off. So I realized that I'm the one losing. Mm -hmm. If someone is not there to mm -hmm. listen, mm -hmm. you are losing out. Mm -hmm. So why not, as you said, early hours of the morning is a good time. And another thing, maybe I think most husbands, because you've pointed it out, nice things doing my husband. And I say, baby, sit up. We need to talk now. Is this in a <laughs> <laughs> What is it? What is it? This one now that you are stipulating me to sit up. Yeah. <laughs> If you just call him, and he's, if you just even call him, say, I want to see him, eh? <laughs> what does he say? The way you even call him, I ask. <laughs> what is this? Like if you don't tell him, let's have a meeting. <laughs> what is this? What is this before the show? <laughs> because it's, it's out of believe that this meeting. <laughs> yeah. ah, they all do one of the say, ah, the way you even said it alone, mm -hmm. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. It's not that we need to write it on WhatsApp. Mm. Send it to me. Let me put it in our repeat. He prepared himself yeah. in order mm. to come and react. Because men take time to process yeah. and, 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 he, and he said it to me. He said if you don't even write it there, when I get my piece of work, I will read it and roll after. Mm. If I write, I write that one, he will read it and digest. digest. <laughs> and think and think and think. Yeah. And when you come down from, like what you say, when you come down from work, even when he just come, he will really open the door. And the children will say, Daddy, say, I've told you, when I come back from work, don't call me at all. Let me calm down. Calm down. Mm. Before you even, and my children, they are like that, because they do that to me. Maybe mm. I'm opening my door and going to my room, they will run after me. Mm. Mommy, why, yeah, 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 do you even, I don't do even call daddy. No matter how bad it is, let me come. Let me come. I'm coming from working with the lad, then you can come and tell me. So now that my children are they know, mm. and even myself, even when he comes back, I don't see anything. Let him go, come back and see. Well, uh, but that is not too okay mm. in parenting. Because that child might not really come back to you. Mm. I've experienced. Sorry, I'm not taking us back to parenting. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, back home. I was teaching in a school, a secondary school. This child, the GSS one, we are all from that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> GSS one child, she's like 10 years old, a girl. Mm. The school is a boarding school. So one day I was That's just like having, I was just having a conversation with her. And she was telling me something. The dad is a very big man. You see all these importers, Nigeria importers, mm. exporters. <laughs> yes. Now they don't have time for the kids. Mm. They leave the children for mm. household. And then, you remember at home where these importers will have uh, boys, Mm, people that apprentices, work people that will work under them and after which they will you know, they settle, them, settle them, establish them. So these guys have mm. been playing with this girl, mm. touching mm. her, touching her breasts, touching her everywhere. Mm. Then I asked her, did you tell mommy? She said, 
the day she wanted to talk to mommy, the moment she entered, she wanted to go and talk to her. Mommy said, I'm tired, I'm tired. Please leave me, leave me, I'm very, very, very tired. Mm. So the girl didn't tell the dad, and this thing continued. Mm. It continued. I, so I, please, uh, let's give listening. I ear think to our boundaries children. is, I, I relate with what she's saying, mm. all I understand. And I think not as much as we try to accommodate our children. I don't want I for my own like you said family time moments. Mm. Um, that's family way you know that your children can express. tell everybody can say mm -hmm. anything. Because the children also need to know that their parents are emotional beings, especially mm. those that are growing up. They cannot just no mommy, I want Not to now. Time. now. Mm. They also need to develop you need to develop their emotional world in that okay, you have emotions, mommy has emotions, daddy has emotions, mm -hmm. you have to know. Where mm. to approach such matters, and that's why we have to start teaching them character yeah, development yeah. from early, 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 early stage. Early. So it's yeah. fine if that wants to take time when he's back from, but the children should have no will have been taught like okay from, from the baby. Okay, now after that you can now sit down. Let's because dad also needs is a person. Let's mm. be woman with our children. Mm. Let's make them know that mommy can also cry. Mm. Mommy can also even laugh. daddy can mm. cry. Daddy too. can cry. If, so everybody needs to come in there with kids with kids and their emotions it's a different thing managing your emotions it's yeah. a different thing managing the emotions of the child with children the moment they want to talk no matter what you are doing don't shut them up that's why i advise that because even you as an adult when you want to say something and somebody stops you, stops you the way you would have said it that very time would be, mm -hmm. be different with what you would Sometimes say it. Like Some you will you change your mind. You will mm -hmm. not want Decide to say, not to say it anymore. That is how kids behave. So mm -hmm. at that time, when that's nudging and the feeling is there to speak, listen. if you cannot listen, God has given you a mobile phone. Everybody have an Android phone. Put it on record. Drop it. That is always what I advise. Even if you are not listening, you are so tired, you are not, just allow the child talk record it at your spare time play that thing mm. play it and listen to what the child will say but don't say shut up get mm. out don't do this i'm mm. tired eh, eh. Mm. just record it and come back to that message later no that's not how you say it i understand what you are saying your child will not come and say oh mommy i want to say get out shut up <laughs> Yeah, you will explain to each other. Yeah, even when you're sleeping. That's where you have to discuss. Because there are some children that talk when you are in the public. Mm. They need to so tell the balance. I mm. understand what you're saying. There needs to be balance. I see children outside and they just talk anyhow. I'm like, okay, mm. can't you talk about this thing in your home? They just talk and they feel they can talk anywhere, mm. anyhow, say anything. Mm. And you can't tell your children to shut up. No parents should say shut up to their children, mm. especially when they want to express mm. their feelings. Mm. We are just saying that there are some things that you need to build. That's why you have adults that are not emotionally developed. We see them at universities, like mm. maybe children. Mm -hmm. They just do things, say things yeah. anyhow. Because they've not been taught Talk. that this is how to behave. Emotions should be developed. Mm. Should let uh, um, kids understand that they don't have the entitlement spirits mm. because we tend to build this entire because you know it's a gen z world mm. and we let them enter go yeah and i know the way we were brought up is different mm. we can have this discussion with our children interaction okay i i don't have a good up child i have mm. maybe my first daughter is three years old but when it comes mommy this mommy that i i listen i like listen i listen so there was a time we were praying for example we were praying in the name of Jesus, family prayer, and just came, Mommy, I want juice. So, that is where you need to do yeah, I will not yeah. get up. Mm -hmm. Even if I know she's thirsty, I will make her understand that. Yeah, prayer yeah, that's that's different. Different. That's different. So, that is the example. I need and I also like, like, like to it. add sometimes when I come back very tired, there are some children that are extremely free spirited, extremely. Mm -hmm. My last child is like that. Yeah. She doesn't give me breathing space. <laughs> <laughs> when I come and I just want to, I have this headache that I want to just put my head on the pillow for a few minutes and just get it. She bashed into the room, mommy, mommy. Hey. I said, Joanna, go back. First of all, you didn't knock on the door, mm. and I'm really tired now. Okay, go back and knock and come and she'll do that. I say, okay, now can you give me 10 minutes, just 10 minutes to get myself? 
Okay, she closed the door. This girl will come. Ten it. minutes again, she's there. Because, and maybe that ten minutes, I'm still not in that space. I will add twenty minutes to it. So because the reason is this, um, you understand the situation. People that know me, my husband is not always around. If you are around sometimes, like during the holidays, I will send them go and meet your daddy. At least let's balance it. But I'm the daddy and the mommy, and so I'm extremely tired. I can't be available. Even the whole world is coming on your head at that time. I am not available. I have made a mistake when I was pregnant for the twins, and that was what made me give back prematurely. My first daughter was three years old, and she was calling me, Mommy, I want to see. Mommy. And I knew I was extremely dizzy. Extremely dizzy. And I just stood up and fell on my oh, tummy. 27, 26 shit. weeks pregnancy. And I went unconscious and entered into labor immediately. They had to take out the babies. And each day, each time I remember all, because it's not affected my twin children, it's just that like God, thank God for God who be being who he is, you know, help them through that situation. But it's, it, it, I, I, it's I, they went to special tools and all the things that I went through, just raising this, just because I stood up to answer that, you know, that team would have not, she wouldn't have died if she didn't wait 30 more minutes to but take that to yourself. So sometimes, I, I, I learned a lesson from that, that anytime I'm not available and I need a headache, I have a headache or something, I just need 30 No, even if the thing is coming down, and God, God knows and sees my heart, that at that time, I need that rest. Let that child wait. That and I think what we can also do, if mm. the child did not come, after we've gotten our mm. food, okay. I go to the child. What do you now say? Let's mm. talk now. Let's just. Which happened yesterday evening because she came three times. I still tell her, Joanna, I'm tired. I will see you when I get my <laughs> rest. And then she was angry. She went by the bathroom and carried the blanket and was saw me. Mommy has kicked me away. Mommy doesn't like me. In the bathroom, it was my son that came to report that this child is in the bathroom. <laughs> She's sleeping in the bathroom. I had to now, okay, come, let's talk. You know, so sometimes you get to that, and I'm not saying that it's mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because that was an extreme. Mm -hmm. She yeah, came like three times, and, extreme, yeah. you know. I went extreme, so nevertheless, I think we should know when to set boundaries and we should also yeah. know how to set balance. Yes. Being available for your children does not mean that even you should be, you know, yeah, should be yourself. yourself yeah. That's, yeah. You know. So, God will help us. Let's hand over to the <laughs> 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 we spent a long time, but I think I like the interactions we're having, you know. Yeah, because also I wanted to get to you when mm. you said um to my head you of your pregnancy and stuff. You also need to get over that. You also need to heal from that. Mm. Because mm. this child is just being herself. Mm. It doesn't yeah. have anything to do to with do what it's happened to you. Yeah. And you don't need to be reminding her. It, telling no, her. no, no, I didn't. I'm just saying also, for myself. It made me yes, conscious. I understand, but also you mm. need to you need to heal from that. Okay. Even if you take precautions or whatever, but it has to come from a point of being healed. Okay. Because now it's like something like this happened to me, and I'm not letting anyone. It's like you've created a wall, you know. Okay. So, okay, I get your point. Put down the wall okay. and then address wow. whatever yeah. issue that you Thank have you. to to have to to. Thank address. you for that. I'm taking notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Norma. You was at home. Hello. Uh, I'll be talking about managing emotions in business. Mm. Um, I'm a mom. I think that's one of the roles that I God has blessed me with. I've been married for 16 years, and I love marriage so much. Mm -hmm. I love marriage. I love beautiful marriages. I won't. I will not lie. I'm a firm believer of love. I love love. <laughs> <laughs> um, however. I think I have gotten to a point of um, loving God so much that I understand that His ways are higher than my ways. Mm. Um, I do not take it, you know, upon myself that okay, marriage whatsoever fail or whatsoever. I'm like, okay, God, you've given me a husband. We had a beautiful time. I've got my four beautiful children, and mm. I'm so thankful for that. Mm. The season for Him or for us was over so i'm open to what god is having for me next <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's not like um i'm like okay i've shut the door no i haven't shut the door mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i haven't shut the door um i'm just allowing god the process and the process mm -hmm. uh, i like to highlight that because i think it's it has got everything into who i've also became as a person and into how i manage emotions because when I started off my business, it was right at the time where our problems started hitting. And actually, to be precise, the first day I left my nine to five job, 
into full-time business. It was the first day I ever saw flames in my marriage and moved out of my house. So it has, it's always been a part of what I do every day, who I am every day, how I react to things on daily basis. Mm. That one day has taught me a lot. Wow. <laughs> it has taught me a lot because uh, just briefly, you know, the morning we were going to school with the kids, like normal daily routine, and something happened. I won't go there. But however, how I handled that day mm. has helped me through, through it every season that I've been uh, going through as a person going into business uh, because as much as a huge thing happened my kids I asked my kids do you still want to go to school they said yes of course we're going to school sorry so they still wanted to go to school and I was left alone to feel the emotion and at that point I realized that Whatever happens in life, life still has to go on, mm. you know. Um, so I, I only draw strength from that day <laughs> because I think my kids, all of them, it, it was like they were told. They all said, yes, we are going to school. Mm. We're going to see the psychologist at school. Mm. So um, now going, getting back to, 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 to business as a mom and as a woman. Mm. Because it's one thing to be in business, be a man, and it's one thing to be a business, to be in business, a, a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so it's for me, it, it, it has always been um, the, by the grace of God mm -hmm. that I have managed. I will not tell the viewers at home and you guys lies. <laughs> it has always been through the grace of God. Mm -hmm. um, however, I just I uh, just want to highlight a few things. When you get into any kind of business. Actually, even not in business, by just being a human being, it's always important to understand that you, what you are called for, what is your purpose, why has God created you, mm. and understand exactly what vision God has put in you. Mm. Because in business, there's just so many things that go on. Mm. Like there's so many things. It's important to know whose you are. Mm. Because there's so many other gods out there. Hmm. especially when you are in the business space so uh, it's not only about managing your emotions it's also about managing yourself knowing who you are knowing what your vision is because you will be distracted by what other people are doing hmm. uh, when those rainy days comes and when those rainy days comes and I think also as women in business it's also important to be content in who you are. You know this thing of knowing exactly who you are. You know, not in a bad way, not to be arrogant or say, okay, I know who, who am I, I'm mm. worthy. And, but just knowing where you stand with God and knowing your position mm. in God, knowing mm. your place in God. Mm. So I think um, those are just three key things that I want to, 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 to highlight, which mm. have been the biggest um, strength into overcoming um, my, the emotions mm -hmm. it's a roller coaster i will not lie some days are up some days are down sometimes some days are really really like down and you still have to put a, a plate on the table mm -hmm. there's kids involved there is your life involved mm -hmm. and um i think going back to what you, you've said emotions are part of who we are i think uh, there's a scripture actually in bible that we are the spirit being built into the, the physical being, body, yeah. built into a body, and that spirit it goes with in you know these emotions, these emotions mm. each and every day. Mm. Jesus Christ Himself had a, 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 an encounter where He was being emotional, but for me, one thing that have um, stood out for me in that particular story when He was beaten up, when He was pierced on the side, when He was humiliated, harassed, and all. He took the emotion, he showed the emotion when he said, Lord, if this cup was for me, mm. let it pass. So what I personally do is I take the emotions. I understand I'm a human being. Mm. I don't act as if, oh, I've got everything under control. No. Mm. But who I talk to, who I express my feelings, feelings to and emotions important. to 
is very key mm. because you know the business is, is, is a dangerous place mm. to be and you meet women and the very same, same women they can break or, or, or make you mm. so for me that's why I was saying whose I am is key mm. because you know when there's those days come I draw strength from God to say okay Jesus himself wept and he realized that hey, things are not going okay mm -hmm. and I always go back to him and say Lord it's dry sales are zero business is not working you know whatever that I'm trying is mm -hmm. not working out I always go back to cry to him mm -hmm. and you know also having kids I haven't shut the door of my kids seeing my, my vulnerability, mm -hmm. but also I've opened it so much that they see who am I being vulnerable to. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I express exactly how much I feel right at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And it's a new phone, I don't know how to... <laughs> switch it off <laughs> so um i'm very much intentional about that mm. and um also going into business as i said as a woman you will be taken an advantage of you will feel that what the hell was going on in that meeting why did they undermine me because you are human being mm. painting back at what you were saying mm. to say you want to cultivate that by the way, I'm qualified. By the way, I'm educated, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to do that. But the Holy Spirit, again, mm -hmm. has always been a point of reference, you know. Mm -hmm. It quiets you. It, it just silences you. Mm -hmm. In days where you want to, like, hey, I can prove it to you that <laughs> I'm not just any woman, you mm -hmm. know. So taking um, things to God through the word, mm -hmm. you know, filling yourself so much uh, with the word. And also relying on what God says mm. every single day. Because sometimes I'll be like, okay, uh, like for example, Tuesdays, we do a strategic planning, we do our posters, we do all those things. But some days God will just say, uh, call this person. And if it, it's not the day for me to call my clients, mm. call this person. And I'll rely on the Holy Spirit and not do everything else that I've planned. And just rely on what God wants me to do mm. instantly, you know. It works. As it, 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 it works out. But however, what I've uh, also uh, okay, the key the key things that makes us so emotional, maybe especially in to be kind of broken in business, is the fact that sometimes we deal with people. Mm. Uh, we know people. People are people. You work for them, they will not pay. They will pay you five days away, a month away. And some some of them will even want you to ask for your money, and uh, some of them will even want you to roll your sleeves and want to fight. And um, so um, how I manage all of that, it, it's just a roller coaster. You can't say I've got this, mm. it, I've got it figured out. Mm. But like I said, it's the constant going back to who gave you an idea, mm. who gave you the vision, mm. and remind me, mm. reminding him. Um, there's a word in the Bible which says, "Remind me." And Guru Gula, he, he always says, "Remind me even of your offerings that you've made, mm. of your, mm. your of your tithes, you know, all mm. those things. Those are the things that helps you. That always." Guides. you know guides you into how to manage uh, mm -hmm. the, the, when the situations come and they make you either angry they make you either sad they make you either you know we can see that eh, i did not make sure these kids would say <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um like those two things prayer relying on prayer relying on god's word and also relying so much on the holy spirit Wow. And again, you work with people, you're not working alone, you're working with other people. Mm. You find out that you woke up, you prayed, you've done everything. But then you come to your workers. Mm. Um, you come to your workers, someone is just all of a sudden not in place, or someone doesn't pitch up, or is not picking mm. up their phones. And you're like, we've been praying for the job, now we've got the job, now the workers are showing up. Um, 
it's also a very much important to know i think some someone said that it's important to know what triggers you mm. and always be intentional about how you handle mm. for mm. example for me because mm. i've worked a nine to five job I've got some sort of expectations into how mm. people must pitch up. Mm. <laughs> not forgetting that it's not their vision. When it comes to business, it's a different case. Mm. A vision has been given to you, not to them. Mm. And therefore, it will take you a whole lot of prayer and submitting to God and being obedient and listening to the Holy Spirit mm. and praying for them, for them as well, well to understand mm. what mm. is and that you want to, 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 to achieve. Mm. And also, I will re repeat this one again, working so much on yourself that whatever that you expect of them, it is also in you. Mm. For example, punctuality. Mm. If I want them to be at the spot where we're meeting every day, mm. seven, sure. I have to be there at 10 to 7 every day mm. and just try out mm. everybody that, okay, mm. I'm here, guys, 10 to, six, 10 to 7, so that they may know. Mm. Also, another thing that I've learned um, into how to manage things, things can go like out of hand mm. especially when it comes to payments and all of those those things you haven't been paid by the client it is not their problem it is your problem mm. so as much as you are the boss lady <laughs> as much as you have got your qualifications you know i've studied this i've studied that it's it's not about them mm. now all they want they've worked they've done the job for you mm. they want their it. money mm. take the pride away and be a human being for once you know i always say this um, when we do the, when we support the teams, because we also do the team man, team management and team trainings and sessions, you know, when you are the boss, it's like you're not a human being. Mm. You always have That's this pest selfless. and this head that, hey, I'm the boss here. I always say you are the boss for as long as you mm. are within the work premises, and you are the boss for as long as you give them that time. Mm. You don't know what's going to happen to the other person mm. next time. So it's always important to be humble enough and be transparent. Mm. Make things, you know, clear to everybody mm. that, okay, we've got this contract. As much as you won't go into all the details regarding the contract, but the things that pertain to them, you have to be very much mm. open and honest straight. about them. Otherwise, things will go west. And you will show your emotions, you will have anger, you will want to show who you are and all of those things. And it doesn't matter at that time they want their money. So we have said it at the beginning that listen guys, we've got this contract, this is when we're going to be paid. Yes, as a business owner, I will try to make sure that you go to work or whatsoever, but I do not guarantee you that every month we're going to be paid until that contract pays. Mm. You know, those are such of some mm. other things for that them you, have you for them to have an understanding. And also, love them as much as you love yourself. Mm. 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 You know, uh, another thing that mm. I have learned mm. over the years of how to handle emotions is to love yourself. You know, when you love yourself, you don't have time to hate people. Because when the person isn't doing right in business, trust me, they push you to a point of you like, oh, there she comes. What story is she going to say today? Mm. And also the cliche. It's always important to speak positive mm. about everybody, not only you. When I do my daily prayers and affirmations, I also do them on their behalf because mm. some are lost as I was also lost, mm. you know, just to extend that grace of loving them. Okay. It also helps to minimize like, all these other challenges mm. and therefore are able to manage whatever emotions and i allow them as well mm. to express their their, their emotions, emotions because if i don't allow them to be angry i will mm. not know what they're thinking Feelings. i will think that we're together until mm. some <laughs> some things i think that's where <laughs> empathy comes in yes mm. yes you know uh, on, on, on closing <laughs> there was something i was saying to my kids um there was something i was saying to my kids um i said it i think a long time ago I was angry about something. I, you know, one thing I know is that I don't want to be this perfect mom that my kids don't know that you, you can become angry as a person and it's okay. Mm. Mm. So I was talking to Pure. Pure is more like me, more humble, more understanding, you know, more open and giving grace to to other people, you know, mm. extending that grace to say, okay, I understand you didn't do it on purpose. And then on this day, I said to Pure, you know what, Pure? As much as you extend grace, you must also get to a point of just let the hell break loose. Hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> no, such people with so much grace when they break loose, it's, yeah, it's, it's I said, 
at, at some point, mm. you know, you must just let hell break loose. But don't always be the bigger person. Mm. I don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> okay. And then um, a circumstance at work wanted me to do the same that I mm. said to my son. So. And I couldn't. The Holy Spirit was like, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. And you know, like Mumu was saying, I was so angry that I wanted to fire someone immediately to say, mm. I've given you many opportunities to come and work with, with us. Seemingly you don't. You, 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 I'm giving you something that you don't want. Mm. You still need to try to find yourself, go find yourself somewhere else. Of which, later did I realize that that is also my calling because I've been a teacher. Mm. I've been putting people into places, you know, just getting your mind right. And the Holy Spirit said, remember what you've been doing on those great 12 children when they mm. were all over the places. This is what you're supposed to do. Mentor her instead of mm. resent, being resentful and all of wow. that. And then now I come back, my kids are my friends. I tell them that Ish, some, like, something like this happened. And you know, I was so angry. Mm. And then people was like, what happened to letting help? <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> But you know, um, what, 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 what the, the, the bottom of, 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 of this story is, is the fact that sometimes you plan that you are going to do this in your human nature. Mm. And when you have stayed so much with God and the Holy Spirit, mm. the Holy Spirit just do it for you. Mm. Just do it on your behalf. Mm. So um, I think, yeah. That's how I do it. You said it a lot, eh? Yeah. And um, I think I will just use five minutes. God help me. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. I want to yeah. chip in that uh, okay. our own managing emotions affect everyone. everyone. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> if, for example, because I want to into business. Mm. One, if the business is not going well, let's start from the marriage. Mm -hmm. You get to you tell your husband, no visa to the one. <laughs> Secondly, I'm no not even, even to cook. Everybody find your way mm -hmm. into marriage. Come to the children. The children come to tell us no and say, Mommy, mm -hmm. in fact, we are going for a trip. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm going to make 20 rand today. Mm -hmm. You are asking me for which money? Mm. Don't you know business is quiet, it's November. It's quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Comes to the church. They, they give you something to do, to minister on. Because you are not happy, the landlord is asking for rent, everything. everything. Even the way you are even needing the soul, people can see. Mm. But this person is not happy. Mm. Emotionally, you are down. down. So the business aspect affects everything. everything. Yeah. It, it affects everyone because when this is not going right, you are sad and you don't even know when you bring it out to your in-laws, to your friends, in the church, in the, your children, even your husband. And also in the business aspect of it, it's also sure at times the, the, the vision that God gives you. Mm. Because like somebody like me, like I said, in my place of work, they put all my teachings into practice. When you use the practice, it will work. It's a different thing to teach. It's yeah. a different thing now to bring it to practice. <laughs> that place they put you everything to, to practice. Then I saw God that no God, this is you. Yeah. Mm. In a sense that people are owing you. Let me give you a practical example. Yesterday I was closing, they're, they're going home. A lady called me and said, and I went to her and said, you know you have been owing me, I've not even paid you. She bought something and she has not even paid you a cent. I said, please make a plan tomorrow, which is today. He said, Ma, I cannot see you tomorrow. And even what you sold for me, you know what she said? It's finishing. I want another one. She has not paid me. <laughs> it's finished. She has not paid me. And she still wants another one. Another one. Hmm. Well, how do you expect me to do? <laughs> Where I'm stuck here, they giving me on credit. And I just said something so softly. And I said, Everybody, child. I suppose to when it's yeah. talk to for them to do contribution, they will give me money. Yeah. For stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you know, it's for them to buy something to eat, they have money. Then when it comes to come and pick in, they don't have money. We are working together, I can see. 
And God has given me grace to be so patient. Mm. And that patience now makes it always will come to me. Mama, where is your church? Mm. Hey, we want to follow me into a good church. Mm. Can you come and pick us? Mm. So many times they will leave mm. when you know, and they will take the car. And come there. Mm. And come Just and pick them. What you start this mm. In business, mm. you will meet different kinds of people, but people are looking at your reaction. Mm. Mm. Your reaction will tell us if you are a Christian or because mm. people will sit to you. They will have what they are supposed to give you. They won't give you and they will tell you come and do your work. What will you do? God will help us. You have to show your Christianity. I've heard everything like I don't even have anything to say. <laughs> All right. I'm Nonye Chupuma and uh, I'm finalizing by speaking on managing um, emotion on life experiences. And one thing I've got to realize is that um, God gave us emotion for a purpose. God is a waste of things. Mm. So be it positive or negative was created by God, but it depends on how we react and how we act on it. Um, I think the scripture says um, it's okay to get angry, but don't. Angry, but So God that made that saying in the world knows that mm -hmm. anger comes. And sincerely speaking, if you look at every pain we experience during the course of, you know, life, um, if we truly channel that pain to what God is directing us to, like it says in Romans 8, verse 28, that God works all things to our good. You realize that in every emotion, there's a purpose for it. But it's just that sometimes, unfortunately, we don't pick out the purpose. I've heard of people, it, it took them to lose their husband. I've heard of you one lady, I took her to lose her husband. For her to realize the actual purpose God actually wanted her to live out to. You know, because her husband, she was looking up to her husband as a God. Like, he's one that leads the prayer. She can't start off from her bed to call for family prayer mm -hmm. and all that. He was like everything to her. And then, it's not like, you know, I, I don't know, but I would just say God, when she was doing because of the interview, she said she feels God made it happen for her to wake up, for her to arise to her calling. Because if at all her husband was still it's not like she, she's happy that he's gone, but she woke up, like she travels countries, many, and she's accomplishing a lot for God's kingdom, you know. That, it took her husband. So, and this morning I was also listening to um, a, a minister that was preaching, and she said, when God told Abraham to, to, to take um, the son Isaac and kill his son, it wasn't about killing him really. God wanted him to, that obsession we have, and discuss somehow God wanted to see if that son was an idol to him. And for him to even agree willingly, God could say that, okay, I've tested this. So sometimes God allows us to go through these emotions to see how we'll treat it, to see mm -hmm. how we we'll react to it. Are we going to allow, allow life experiences are we, to, to, you know, to take control of us, to take control of the way we act, the way we respond, and the way we, you know, the way people see us? Are we going to allow those circumstances? Because if we look at every Bible character, sincerely speaking, they all had their own piece of cake, mm -hmm. um, starting from David. In fact, the whole Psalms, if you take time to read the whole Psalms, you realize it was just David crying out to God and pouring out his emotions. In every, in every or most of the um, Psalms, he was pouring out his emotions, pouring out, and it was actually to God. So the same thing with Moses, if we look at um, the book of Numbers 11, I think verse 14 to 15, he also mentioned there, you know, he went and was crying out to God, that God, please, these people you have given me to eat. Because sometimes in terms of leadership, you, as you mentioned, I've been a boss, um, expectations are high. People want you to go left, you go left, they say go right, you go right, go middle. It's difficult to please and we all know how the Israelites treated him. So it, he got to a point he also cried out. The same with Jonah when God sent him out. So we realize that each and every one of them in one way or another had their outburst. And that's supposed to show us that we're all emotional beings, you know. And God made us to have those emotions to see how we can um, bring out something out of it. And if we channel it in the right way, I believe that um, it will really, you know, be for God's glory. So I would like to speak about um, a few triggers, you know, we've talked about jealousy, anger, but there are areas that sometimes are quite subtle that we do not know, like doubt. Sometimes you might be hit with a certain challenge in your life that you begin to doubt if God actually, you know, you begin to doubt your salvation, really. You know, there was an experience I had lately where... God had told me that this thing is going to be done. And because I've seen God do so many things, even in terms of my studies and all that, I was so certain that, yes, God has said it, he will do it. 
I was almost like bragging in my. <laughs> I, I don't know if I was leaving God out of it because I was still asking God, but God, I didn't leave you out of it. But maybe God saw that I was now glory more in that thing, you know. And God just made something that was going all well and right. Just turned from nowhere, it became wrong. Then I was saying the same story, like, okay, no, I, I, actually something went wrong. I, I, I said, Kilo de God, why are we going back to square one? Everything you are doing in my life will first of all be going right and will go wrong. What have I done, you know? So, but I, I, I had to definitely, I definitely had to now take out and say, God, there's something you want from me. I had to bring that. I told him because when the way the thing was going, I was like, God, this is Thanksgiving, November. God has answered all my prayer. I, I've ticked all my all my checklist, everything. God has answered. November, I'm just going to be thanking God. Immediately that thing just got fired. I wanted to pull back. I said, God, I'm not giving any Thanksgiving again. It's like, in fact, this is the because this is the cocoa. This is the cocoa I wanted you to do. And now it has not happened. So what's the point now of even giving doing Thanksgiving? So one night, the Holy Spirit appeared and, you know, was speaking to me and prompted me that day I woke up and I was so sober, I felt like crying, I felt like rolling. You know when God breaks you? He said, He wants me to be broken because sometimes you want biscuit, God give you, you want chocolate, God give you, you want chicken, you start bragging to everybody. God is a gift, anything you ask Him, He give you. But God also wants you to learn and sometimes He also wants you to stretch. He wants to test your patience. He wants to test your perseverance. What happens when he doesn't give you? Is the world going to end? He wants to see that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen God do that in many areas of my life. This is starting with my PhD studies. You know the story? I believe that this morning he was speaking to me. He was reminding me about it. That really, if I had gotten that thing when I wanted it, the world would have gloried in it. Eh? Mm -hmm. hmm. People will not see God in it. Mm -hmm. But the way it happened, now if you say, doctor, it's like, I don't even, don't even call me that doctor. Just call me my name because God beat me. Like, eh? he beat me blue black. He humbled me. So it made me, anytime I'm facing any challenge, and that goes to what I'm speaking about, like life experiences, when the doubt starts coming. Because this is as I was saying, I was expecting God to do, God has started it, I was getting good news, all of a sudden, good news turned to bad news, you know. And I was like, God, there's no need to thank you, there's no need to do November Thanksgiving. I was like, and God was like, look at you. Your mom was, was ill, I healed that, this and that, so that is not enough. Mm -hmm. I must give you every piece of cake you want in your mouth. You know, I cried that day. I was like, God, and so, so it made me, I, it charged char me up. I got up and I said, first of all, for fact, the whole November, I'm going to be remembering one thing God has done, and I'll meditate on the scripture for that. So I think when we're faced with anything that triggers us, whether that, because I'm telling you, I said it with doubt, if it was God that was speaking to me, until God intervened and said, it's me that was speaking, but I had to delay it. I had to change it. As it says in that Romans 8, 20, that you sometimes... You know, he'll tell us for our good, even when it seems like it's bad. Mm -hmm. But learn the lesson he's teaching us. Yeah. It's not, you shouldn't get to a point of doubt. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the fear, worry, and anxiety that comes, you know, are major triggers of um, emotions. Sometimes you feel fear, feel like, hey, God, it's still, sometimes it's worry, sometimes it's anxiety. In fact, sometimes you can't even define it. So it's good for us to also start identifying these triggers. When is it fear? If it's fear, speak to that fear. And the Lord is my self, light and my salvation. The Lord has not given all the spirit of fear. So learning to counter those feelings with the word, meditating on the word and renewing your mind constantly is what I started learning to do this November. And I'm praying that every viewer that is watching, whatever life experiences you are facing, fear, worry, anxiety, sometimes even guilt. The enemy will make you start feeling guilt. That maybe you were brand. The other day, the enemy was telling me it's because you talk too much. The other day, you went and wrote on Facebook this thing. I was like, ah, well, that thing I wrote is not word of God. Mm -hmm. So I started to ask God, God, is that thing, I, that thing I shared, was it wrong? Was it, was it to hurt anybody? Wasn't it for your glory? And God said, see, sometimes I should be careful because when the voice of the, the voice of God and the voice of the enemy, mm -hmm. sometimes the enemy will turn that thing into condemnation mm -hmm. until you are getting convicted. And God is not meant to make you feel guilty because guilt is another um, trigger. Yes. You keep feeling guilty. Sometimes you feel guilty as a parent. Oh God, I'm not playing my role. Oh God, I failed as a parent. Oh God, this and that. Watch that guilt. Identify it. Is that guilt coming from condemnation? Because the enemy will use it to make you torment you and haunt you and all of that. If it's coming from God, it comes as a conviction and to be a prompting from the Holy Spirit. So sometimes I don't even identify, I feel, oh, so I wake up with guilt, I'm like, God, I'm the most worthless human being, look at this thing I did, oh God. I'll start raining these things on me, and then I will imagine the Holy Spirit will just intervene and say, no, that's not me speaking, immediately I will go into prayer. So we have to be able to recognize these voices, recognize these triggers, and be able to, you know, give them back what they deserve, you know. So those guilt, those subtle um, triggers, guilt, 
doubt, even loneliness. Loneliness, sometimes the thing will just make you um, cut yourself away. You feel like everybody is misunderstanding you, everybody hates you, everybody does not like you, everybody is like you're forcing yourself on people. Um, seeking God's face in that time can also intervene. God can help you, heal you, and even those people you feel that are against you, because I think it's the enemy that is just yeah. using your mind to fight you. You have to recognize that that is not of God. So I pray the Lord will help us in whatever life experiences you might be facing. Sometimes it has to do with grief when you are mourning a lost one, a child, a husband, or a job, or financial crisis. All of those things are life experiences. And as we can see in the scriptures, most people that will, you know, survive these experiences, they always went back to God. And starting from Moses to David, each and every one of them, they, they had to go back to their maker not necessarily condemning yourself or looking inwardly yes sometimes you have to check yourself to know where you examine yourself to know how to help yourself out but you can only do that with the help of god so i pray that in whatever life experiences we are facing um in our marriages in our parenting in our, what else is our ministry you know in our businesses in our family friendships, relationships, even with our siblings, sometimes, you know, you can just misunderstand each other for a very long time. You have to, it's good for us to always go back to God. I think going back to God is a way the Holy Spirit will also um, help us um, walk through that journey. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, God's going to be glorified. And every emotion, you know, God will give us the grace not to let it spiral out of control, mm -hmm. but instead, still, you know, subject it to the Spirit of God. You know, every feeling that is not of God. God made us also feel joyful, peaceful. Mm -hmm. So taking it back to prayer and God, sometimes even when you don't have the words, there are times that I feel so disappointed. I feel like the words to pray are not coming out. But um, thank God for encouragement in Romans 8, 26, where he says he has given us the spirit of God to intercede on our behalf. So those times when I don't open my mouth and I feel like nothing is not coming out, you know, it's either I speak in tongues or I pray worship. In that worship, I'm still praying. Or meditate on a scripture. Like I said, this whole journey in November, I wanted to feel disappointed and bitter. I thought, I said, lie, lie. Then we have tried me so many times, you are not getting me this time. And I took it a point of duty. gave myself that assignment because he got me in January. In January, I was given a scholarship to start a, 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 a school of um, work, and I couldn't do it because I didn't have so so, so papers or documents to do it. And I was like, God, why would you give me this scenario? I wanted to do that gratitude thing in January. I can't sue that. I said, I'm not doing it, you know. So I feel like maybe God tested me again this time around, but this time around, I didn't succumb to that yeah. giving up. Because we should get to a point in time where we trust God so much. If God could tell Abraham, take your son and kill him, and he was ready to kill. That means that thing we're idolizing unconsciously is replacing God in our life. So whatever is the case, we're submitting to God and trust him, work with him one step at a time, one day at a time. I believe that the Lord will perfect all that concerns us so, all. So. Thank you so much for listening, Sorry, viewers. For you. Yeah. I, I do recommend books for friends, for myself. Okay. So on emotions, I think this book from mm. is really a battlefield of the mind. Mm. It's very powerful. Yeah. Book. I've read and I'm, I still read it again. It's Did you buy it? Very, yeah, I brought it. I brought it when I was in Nigeria. I still have it. Battlefield of the mind. Mm. Yes. I read book. online a bit. It's a very good book. Mm. How to control your emotion? How to deal with past trauma? How to mm. deal with yeah, to yeah, share that experience? Yeah. It's battlefield of the mind. If you can get it. Wow. Yeah. Thank there's, you so much. There's battle feed of the mind for adults mm. and there's battle feed of the mind for teenagers. teenagers. Mm. Wow. So I think we can get that online, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 It should be on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. And viewers, thank you so much for listening. I don't know if there's any contributions to what I've said or maybe we've said so much. Yeah. <sighs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Um, let's just finalize by praying. Uh, viewers that are watching, thank you for staying tuned. It has been a lengthy one, but I believe that we've all have learned. I have learned from all my sisters here, and I believe that you have learned. Please feel free to drop your comments, contributions, as always. And as we wrap up this session, we want to pray with you. We want to hold our hands together. And um, <laughs> Ma, no, Ma, pray for us. <laughs> Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We understand that this is, was not just a podcast, but this was a spirit-filled moment mm -hmm. for every one of us, oh Lord, and for the viewers at home, Lord. We thank you 
for every imposition of government that has taken place in this place. Yeah, and we know for sure that the government has gone crazy in the people at home, in the people who go to my mother, the workplace, the in families, in the friendships, although. And Lord, we thank you that even with your government, this podcast will not only reach us, Father, but it will reach every individual that is meant to reach, oh God. Amen. Lord, we thank you even for this union, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We pray that even, Father God, on to this gathering, Lord, is not the last one, Father. It is not to the end, but it is just the beginning of great things to come, oh Father. Lord, we thank you for each and every individual meet them in their place of need, oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for strength. We thank you for the praises that we shall sing, Lord God Almighty, this November, this December, oh Lord. We thank you that our lives, oh God, are going to be changed, even us as individuals, oh God. We thank you, Father, for families that are represented in this gathering, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, have your way, have your way out of this, oh God. Have your way, have your way out of this, oh Lord. Let it not be just a gathering of sisters, Lord, but an enrichment to families, to homes, to marriages, oh God. Let your grace, oh Lord, fill us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Lord, Amen. we give you praise, glory, honor, and adoration Amen. for it belongs to you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, sisters. God bless you all. Viewers, God bless you. And see you next year, 2024, on our next session. Bye. <laughs>